Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have with us Al Shevsky, CEO of Pele Mountain Resources. Pele can be traded as GEM on the Venture Exchange and also can be traded as GOLDF on the OTC. Thanks, Al, for being here today. Oh, good morning, Jeb. Thank you very much for having me on the program. Big news this morning, Pele Mountain announces an updated preliminary economic assessment. Al, what do you think is really the numbers and the competitive advantages of Paley Mountain when looking at this report? Well, the numbers are very compelling, Jeb. Uh, we've got a project here that's got a net present value of over a billion dollars at a 10% discount rate and a 50% internal rate of return. These are really great numbers, and uh, it's very exciting for us now to have this to work with. Um, more numbers that came out of the report... Uh, and it's available on our website, by the way, the press release. You can find it at uh, www.pellymountain.com. But uh, it's a big deposit, and uh, we're going to have a high production rate, about 9,000 tons per day. And uh, the average cost uh, for the mining, the processing, and the overhead is about $71 a ton, so that's very competitive. Uh, and the revenue per ton... It's about $154, the net revenue. So the difference between the net revenue and the costs uh, leaves a really good margin. And with so many tons going through, uh, this is a, that's why you get such wonderful metrics on the uh, economic model. So uh, it's a great project. Elliott Lake itself uh, has this history of being the only Canadian mining camp that's ever produced, uh, com uh, commercially ever produced rare earths. And, uh, and in this particular uh, deposit and, and the model that we've been able to put together here, which, by the way, was done by Roscoe Postal Associates uh, on the mining side and the processing was done by SNC-Lavalin. So uh, these are guys that uh, have a lot of experience, relevant experience working in Elliott Lake, and uh, they've come up with uh, what, what we're really excited about this model. You know, Al... Some people have discussed that Elliott Lake may be lower grade than some of the other rare earth deposits. But when I look at the PEA and I see the cumulative operating cash flow of, of, of $2.83 billion, it seems that, that that's not what people should, investors should be looking at. Could you explain more about the, 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 the concern of the low grade and, and why this, this uh, shows that it's going to be, in fact, a profitable mine? Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Jeb, because we hear that from time to time as well. And uh, you've got to look at all the different parameters when you're assessing the economics of a deposit. Um, yes, our deposit is low-grade. If you're looking at the uranium grade and you're comparing it to the deposits in Saskatchewan, sure, we're, we're a low-grade uh, uranium deposit. And, uh, but there's lots of uranium deposits around the world that are in production at grades that we have or even lower that are doing very well. And then you have to take into consideration that it's not just a uranium deposit anymore. In fact, uranium is, is a minority. It only gonna produce, it's only going to produce 33% uh, of the revenue of this property uh, going forward. The, uh, the majority of the revenue is coming from the rare earths. And, and of the rare earth revenue, the majority of that revenue is coming from the heavy rare earths. So, and if you look at uh, uh, the critical rare earths, like neodymium plus the heavy rare earths, uh, the combined total of that is going to produce about 80% of the rare earth revenue. So you've got to look at the holistic uh, approach uh, to what this deposit is about. And uh, the... You know, as I was saying earlier, the, the, the net revenue per ton of rock that comes out of the ground is about $154 per ton. And the, the cost, if you add up all the mining and all the processing and all the G&A, it comes out to about $71 a ton. So there's an excellent margin there. And, and the reason we can achieve those kinds of low uh, unit operating costs is because it's a large-scale operation. 
We're talking about 9,000 tons a day. And the deposit comes right up to the surface, so it's easy access through decline ramps. It just has so many advantages to it that uh, it's, it's not just the grade. I mean, the grade is, is more than adequate to make an outstanding return, and, and that's the key. You've got to look at all the different factors. So when you factor in the size of the production rate and the operating cost and the revenue, what you come out with is a very robust economic model. You know, Al, I've been one. I've been discussing this ongoing race uh, to develop new sources of critical rare earths, and you know how investors should look at, you know, some of the other factors like mining friendly in infrastructure uh, and and your historic that you, you that area has been a pro producing uh, uranium. They've been produ uranium production. It's been a, an area of, of production of uranium and rare earths. So. There's this this race to develop new sources. Could you explain to to my readers why Pele Mountain and that Eco Ridge m mine may be one of the leaders in this race? Absolutely. So now that we've got this economic model and it shows that the economics are very robust, um, the other factors to consider are, you know, the the likelihood of success here. And there's many things that go into that. And in the race, it's also who comes out first. So. Some of the advantages we have are the fact that it's a uh, a well-established mining camp. There were 12 mines there historically. And so you've got everything you need uh, in terms of infrastructure. You've got roads and power, and uh, there's uh, even deep water ports very close by, rail, airport. And there's a city, the, uh, the city of Elliott Lake um, <clears throat> is right next door. Like, uh, we're actually physically within the city limit, the boundaries of the city limit. So you've got a city of 11,500 people. That city was originally developed just to support the mines. And, uh, and we've got strong local support there for the development of this project. So you've got the infrastructure, and another really strong advantage is in the mineralization that we're working with, uh, especially with the rare earths, the, the mineralization that hosts the rare earths is predominantly monazite. Monazite is, is one of the well understood minerals, uh, and the metallurgy is very straightforward. It, it, with acid baking, you can get excellent recovery, and we've been able to demonstrate that in our uh, work that we've been doing at Saskatchewan Research Council. So um, it's, it's a much more straightforward approach, and the recovery is excellent. Um, there's just so many advantages to working in, uh, in this uh, area. In, in northern Ontario, and the team that we're working with, they've done it before. Our vice president is uh, Roger Payne, and Roger is an engineer with 45 years' experience working internationally. 20 years, he worked in the Elliott Lake mining camp, and he was general manager of Rio Algom. Uh, and he's put together the team that he worked with when he was over there at Rio Algom. For the permitting side of things, we're working with Senes and, uh, and uh, Golder, Golder Associates. Now, these two companies were involved in all of the uh, recent and for decades, uh, the, the mine permitting, the uh, operations permits, and the decommissioning out there. So uh, from an environmental and permitting aspect, we have the, the people on the team who have done it all before and who understand, have the baseline knowledge of what's required in Elliott Lake. And then... Uh, for the mining and engineering, we're working with guys, engineers that also have experience in Elliott Lake. So our development team really has the expertise that we need to move this thing through the uh, permitting and feasibility work and into production. So, Al, before we go, could you give us um, an update on the uranium and rare earth market and why Eco Ridge has also a competitive advantage of having, being able to produce both uranium and rare earths? Sure, uh, Jeb. In the uh, rare earth markets, uh, it's very clear. The uh, United States Department of Energy and a lot of other uh, government agencies have looked at the importance of rare earths to the different uh, clean energy and defense applications, and <clears throat> they, they clearly foresee uh, the possibility and the likelihood of supply disruptions on some of the rare earths, not all of them, but for sure the heavy rare earths and neodymium, 
Um, so you've got neodymium, dysprosium, yttrium, um, terbium, europium. These are the things, this is where most of the revenue at EcoReach is going to come from. And those rare earths are considered to be critical because they're very important to these uh, applications, the clean energy, the high technology, the defense applications, and there is a uh, strong likelihood of supply disruptions. On the uranium side, we also see that starting in 2014, there's a, a significant divergence between supply and demand going forward. And so in the case both for the heavy rare earths and for the uranium, we see very strong support, fundamental support based on demand exceeding supply for the prices to continue to, to be rising. And uh, we see that as an excellent environment to be moving ahead now to develop this project. Well, thanks, Al, for being here today and for telling us about the updated PEA and uh, plans for 2012 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us on the program, Jeb.